some new coaching hires announced in this league. Let's start with probably one of the biggest ones. Washington Spirit make the announcement that Mark Parsons is going to be their new head coach for 2023 and beyond. And I got to say, Lisa, when this news dropped, I was a little bit surprised in the good way. It was like a pleasant surprise. It's like, you know, what is I was like, what is what are the spirit going to do for this coaching vacancy? Because I have sort of felt in this offseason that the spirit are this this franchise that have very slowly, quietly kind of making these moves to kind of bulk up their support staff, whether it's on the technical side or the coaching staff. And I had been already very impressed with what they've added, right? And then they make the announcement of Mark Parsons. So what were some of your uh, reactions when you saw this news drop, Lisa? Yeah, I think that uh, the name Mark Parsons is obviously one that is very familiar in the NWSL world, in the women's soccer world. So um, it, it's a name that the NWSL only didn't have for one year this past year uh, because he was with Portland Thorns for, I think, five years between – 16 and 2021 before that he actually started in the nwsl with washington spirit so now he returns to washington spirit after just one year out of the nwsl when he went to coach uh netherlands women's national team that didn't last very long and he's now back i think that it was i, I think like it's a great move for washington right like mark parsons is a really good coach he led port and thorns to a number of championships um he knows what he's doing he also understands the nwsl incredibly incredibly well because he did spend so much time with Portland Thorns even with Washington just in the league he's he's been there since 2013 for the entirety of it except this past season so I think in terms of what Washington is getting they know exactly what they're getting and that's something that's really certain and that's really good because Washington needs a little bit of a revamp right they they lost Kelly O'Hara um, they they went through two coaches last year they went through a lot of front office turmoil two years ago they go from winning the NWSL championship in 2021 to finishing bottom of the table in 2022. So if there's anyone that can is up for the challenge, it's Mark Parsons. Now, in terms of like the personal side of it, I am a little bit shocked that he is back in the NWSL. I yeah. am. I'm going to be honest and put that out here because you and I even talked about this months yeah. ago hey, when there yeah. were a number of NWSL vacancies. This was off mic, you and I chatting about the league because it's not just our job, it's our lives. And we live, eat, breathe this league. And we talked about Mark Parsons and how he was with the NWSL for so long and he wanted to go home. He's, he's from England and he's from Europe. So he, to get back to the Netherlands and be coaching there was a chance for him to move his family. He has young children back to closer to home and back to where his family is. And the fact that his coaching tenure with the Netherlands did not last very long, um, was a little bit surprising, but after that, I was like, no, he's going to stay there. The whole point was to go back home, was to go back to Europe and be yeah. close to the family. So the fact that he is coming back to the States is a little bit surprising. Now, he is on the East Coast with Washington Spirit, which is a much shorter flight <laughs> to yeah. Europe than it is from Portland, but that was the biggest thing that surprised me. I thought he was making a move for his personal life and his personal family, um, but hey, he likes the league, he likes the job, he wants a challenge in, in Washington, I think that's a good place for him to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I know when we did talk about Parsons possibly making a return that there, there were plenty of coaching vacancies that, uh, you know, he could probably interview for. Um, but we weren't too sure if that was a move that he would make back. Would that be something that, you know, uh, is viewed as taking a step back as, as opposed to, you know, having taken that leap to coaching a, a national team side in, in Netherlands. And unfortunately, you know, having a very short run in the 2022 Euros, the, the two mutually parting ways. And, you know, like I said, plenty of vacancies. I I, I, I do wonder how this, this round is going to go because it's a little bit of a reunion for, yeah. for these two parties. You know, we're talking about the Spare franchise in, in Parson and, 
and Parsons, not unfamiliar with the D.C. area, you know, really got his start in terms of the women's soccer side of things, you know, being with the Washington Spirit Reserves, D.C. United Women, and was part of the spirit sides who were, you know, sort of taking those first steps in, in their inaugural seasons and then departed the, the club at 2015 to go take on a new opportunity with Portland Thorns. But during those later years, you know, making it to the postseason with the spirit in, in 2015, 2014. So maybe a little bit of unfinished business for, for Parson and the spirit, you know, so I'm, I'm eager to see what that looks like. I mean, I think we saw, Parsons and what he can do with really young talent in terms of, you know, he was the coach that drafted Morgan Weaver, Sophia Smith, you know, and now he is going to return to NWSL and have players to work with like Ashley Sanchez or Trinity oh. Rodman, you know, what can this coach and, and his staff get out of these players? And I think you're looking at that immediately. If you're on the spirit ownership side of things, if you're Michelle Kang and you're looking at somebody to make sure they're going to come in and get the most out of this current core group of players, you want someone that I think has that uh, experience with it. You know, you already you know, you're looking at a, a short window when you're looking at someone maybe like Trinity Rodman, a player that you've invested time and money in and with a new contract coming off of her rookie year. And then here goes 2022. And they had a very, very tough season, did not even sniff the playoffs. Um, you know, unfortunately, were uh I think they made that new record for most draws. You know, they just were <laughs> unable to to break through and, and find and find the win. So I think um I think this is gonna this is gonna be a move that ultimately yeah. pays off. I think, and, and in terms of of what Washington is doing this off season to bulk up a little bit, we already talked about the announcement of Don Scott, the senior director of performance, medical, and innovation with Washington Spirit. Also, remember that Angela Salem, who retired yep. last year and was coached uh, for four years at Portland under Mark Parsons, was also at Washington Spirit in 2013. Salem is the first assistant. So there's a lot of familiarity. I think that uh, when it, you look at a player like Angela Salem that is now retired as a coach, who better for her to learn from than someone like Mar Mark Parsons, right, as coming back in and having that familiarity. So Washington's bulking up on, on the front office side, on the technical staff side as to how they can turn around what was a pretty bad 2022 season and get it better. And they, these are the steps in the right direction, right? Like we talked about that, like losing O'Hara, maybe not the best thing for them, but this is other ways that they can bulk up. You know, uh, steps in the right direction. We've got to talk about Orlando Pride as well. They made the announcement that they are going to promote Seb Hines to head coach. Hines took over Orlando Pride in an interim role, kind of mid 2022 regular season. June. Yeah, that was June, early June. And so with his time, listen, when you look at the numbers, the record isn't all that impressive, but they did go on a seven game undefeated streak for a big bulk of the time that he took over this pride team. And it sounds like in the off season, they had conversations about moving him from interim to head coach. And then they went ahead and made it official. I think this is a good move. I, I think why not go with it with the coach that sort of started to turn things around a little bit for this Orlando pride team, even in the sense where this team was just found themselves on, on that little bit of a streak and run. And they seem to have responded well to the messaging that he was giving this team during that time. So I'm, I'm eager to see what Heinz can do in a full season with this Orlando yeah. pride side. Honestly, me too. I mean, as you just talked about, Heinz stepped in uh, June, early June, and then they, the team went on a seven game unbeaten run, but during, um, when Heinz took over as that interim head coach, Orlando saw an increase in average of shots, shots on target, passing accuracy. Um, There's three clean sheets throughout his last 15 matches of 2022 that he was in, in charge of that team for. And as uh, a broadcaster of the league, we get to talk to the coaches in a pretty candid conversational way. And we asked him towards the end of the season, like, hey, what are your plans for next year? Do you like this? Do you want to keep doing? Because there are definitely coaches that are like, no, this was fine for a couple months, but no. And Seb Hines was like, no, I love this. I love these players. I love being a head coach in this capacity in the NWSL versus the MLS. He, he spent time with Orlando City. He was a defender in the EPL. 
well uh, with the Premier League. So he's played everywhere. And the fact that he spoke so highly of not only his players, but the NWSL as a whole, um, as, as the league and the competition of it. So I think that that was a really positive thing to hear is that he was like, if they want me, I want to be here. I want to help this team. I want to bring them to the playoffs and, and continue to climb and grind. So, I mean, huge congrats to Seb Hines. That's two coaching vacancies down one more to go with, with Houston dash. That seems to be the end of it. But um, yeah, I think a great gab grab for Orlando to, to keep Hines in place. And it's a multi-year deal, multi-contract to lead Orlando pride. We'll see. We'll have to keep an eye on the, the remainder of the offseason moves for both of those teams. We'll have to keep an eye on Houston Dash and how they're going to fill their head coaching position. 